Right, I make my apologies up front for the awful colour of the inside of my embroidery hoop, but it's that colour for a particular reason. Now you can see on this putrid green screen I have got the word Matelow written twice. And the program I'm using is Digitizer Pro MB Easy Design. Now if you haven't got the Digitizer Pro MB, don't worry, because I'm not going to use the lettering editing. I'm going to use good old fashioned methods. And the first thing I need to do is I actually need to increase the size of my top word. There we go. And then knock it straight out of simulated stitch view into digitizer view. Now you see the reason for this background. I want you to see clearly there are no tie on and tie off stitches visible in this particular top word. There's one little one there. If we look at the one below, you will see there's a tie off, tie on, tie off, tie on, tie off, tie on. They're both 10 millimeters tall. It's just different alphabets and different spacings between each of the letters. So what can you do? Well, you can manipulate your connection lines and your connection lines are these, these little jumps here. Let's go in a little bit closer again. That's a connector. That's a connector. So is that one. So is that one. So is that one. And how do we do that? Well, I use the old fashioned way, mainly because I like to control what I'm doing. And I'm going to use insert while stitching, insert while walking rather, and use my home and end keys, page up, page down, that little clump of keys and my directional arrow keys. Now, if I use my home key, it turns the whole design black, which means there are no stitches there. There are no stitches there anyway until you save it as a stitch file, but there are no simulated stitches present to interfere with what we're going to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk down here. And to do that, I use my right facing arrow key. And let's just move my screen so you can see its progress and hotch it up a little bit. Here we go then. That's where it tied on. And now it's running through the underlay and now it's coming back with the satin stitch. And then we get down to here. And are we at the bottom yet? No. And then it crosses back over, and then it jumps up to there. No tie off. So I use my left arrow key, and I go and I pick up my run line tool. And I click onto that needle point. There we go. And I bring that back to there. Now, can you see what's happened? Let me just take that back quickly, because it happens quite swiftly. There is the cursor. I walked it back down to here and over to there. So let's just quickly go... There you go. And now, because I finished it here, I now have a tie-off stitch. And it's jumped into here. Now we'll do the next letter manipulating the connector, but the next letter then will change, will force a colour change. Right. So I whip through that. And I slow down when I get to here. Right. I walk back to that point. My tool is still selected, so I'm going to put my cursor right into the center, and I get that up bigger so as you can still see it. Yeah, I put it in there, I walk it down to here, and I tell it enter. When this design goes to your machine, if your machine has got auto scissors, what it's looking for are a minimum of three needle up 
commands. Your machine will not stitch. There's your tie off. There's another needle penetration, then another needle penetration, then another needle penetration, and then the tie on stitches. It doesn't stitch those. What the program says to the machine is OK, lady, lift your needle, move over to the next position where I would have dropped down to go through the fabric, but keep your needle up. Then move over another one, which would be this one. But keep your needle up, don't drop it down. Then it comes over to another one, which would have been this one. And it still says, keep that needle up. And then it comes over again, and it goes, ah, now I can put my needle down. So it's made the minimum three needle up movements. As long as your machine is set on three, not four or five, but on three, that means three clear needle up commands, then trim. So it'll trim after it's done this clump of tying off stitches. And then it'll do, still do these, needle up movement, needle up movement, needle up movement. Right, time to put my needle down and put the lock stitches in. And it will do the same here. It'll go, OK, I'm tying off. Come on, lady, lift that needle again. And then I'm going to move one needle spot, two needle spots, three needle spots. Oh, thank goodness, I can put my needle down. And because it's done those clear three needle ups, it will trim. Now, this one is a little bit different. We're going to force a colour change. To do that, I'm going to take, oops, wrong direction, this one back over to there. And then I'm going to say to it, nothing, because I can't at the moment. I'm in the wrong spot. Beazzlebub. I have to do that in a different mode. OK, well, you do that on each of these. And that gives you a tie on and a tie off. So now we're going to look at the letter that's underneath. I'm going to turn everything now back to red by pressing the end key. And that takes my needle down to the final point of the design, which is down there. And as we already saw, this design has got tie-offs and tie-ons. And depending on whether your machine is set for three or four needle ups, will depend whether or not it's going to trim. Now, it's not going to trim here. And the reason it's not going to trim there is because it's too short a gap between there and there. It needs to be longer. And if I get my tape measure, and I get that by just hitting the M key on my keyboard, and I go one over to that, 1.4, OK? Now, if I come over to this one, and I go over to there, 3.3. .3. And then I go from this one over to this one, 3.1. Get in there. So it's got everything to do with the distance between your letters. And if your machine has got a low enough number set to trigger its scissors. Now, I'm not certain how long I've been chattering now. So now I'm going to get rid of all tools. And I've just got a cat that's crawled all over me. And drop this down. And as I don't want to use my editing tools in MB, because not everybody owns the program, so you're going to have to take my word for it. You can change individual letter colours. Trouble is, I'm not used to my new system yet, and I'm definitely not used to my OS. And it is having a slight impact on Digitizer Pro. But now that you understand about the number of needle up points, 
Oh, and the other thing, there is an optimum size for the trims to appear. So let's increase that one to 20. Okay, now they've come in on this one. They don't always come in on 20. And this E has a trim point there. Okay, this one will increase U to 20. And let's have a look at the E. Oh, it's there. <laughs> and there's its trim. Just there. So I hope that's cleared that little thing up for you about the connectors. I'm sorry I proved to be such a duff on doing the co insert colour change. I'm going to have to spend a bit of time with my program and my new computer working out all its little foibles. There we go. Okay, I'm done. Oh, my cat's just jumped up to tell me that I'm not paying it any attention. <laughs>